First Impressions of Overdress. Hey everyone, this is Newman from WCC. Hi, 大家好，我是 Ryan Kai. Hey guys, it's Derek from WCC. Overdress. The first thing I feel it's amazing. Like it's a new, fresh start. We've gotten to the point where、uh, nostalgia has just been an ongoing thing. I just super sick of it. I just want to see something fresh, and that's what Overdress gave me. So I have to say,、um, I, I love it.、Um, I love like how they introduced the ride deck,、uh, brand new units, and everything.、Uh, just everything I really wanted from a bucket list is already there. Honestly, in the beginning, I was quite worried because it is another reboot. However, it looks to be a good change. First impressions of Overdress.、Uh, it reminds me of Kudis, especially the song. Jibun wo seka i something like that. I forgot. Honestly, I'm really excited for、um, the notions that have come forward. So the new f- format is rather exciting with the notion of the five nations rather than clans. Because you know it's just a limited more card pool. That means、uh, more consistent support for everything that you want to play. I just see it's a really positive change for the state of the game. Dark states,、um, dark irregulars in dark states. My friends would have guessed dark states because they know how much I like dark irregulars. However, from the images we've seen, it's not quite the same. They kept the dark part right. But because you have to combine with other clans, and for some reason, Gear Chronicle made everyone have the same rooftop, they lost that irregular bit. So in the meantime, I actually enjoyed the aesthetics of Stoica. I hope they kept part of Grand Blue somewhere.、Mm-hmm. It's a tough one. It's like they they all look fantastic, but if I had to pick, probably a、uh, whatever big hat girl wore, the one with like. Great nature, grand blue. All the plus, like plus clans, are really cool.、Uh, that's like probably the best parts about like the decks I like. So、I'll、probably have to go with that. It's a hard choice actually because、uh, they all have really cool aesthetics coming out of the gate. But if I had to pick one personally, I'd probably have to probably say Dark States, which、uh, I know a lot of people haven't really、um, chosen as their preferred sort of nation going ahead. But、uh, the main priority and the main reason is just because of.、Uh, About obviously Gear Chronicles interaction because that was always my favorite clan. Dark states like not even a question.、Uh, I'm a Pale Moon Dark Irregulars main, so I love you know the gothy vampire type stuff.、Um, I really like to see a little bit more outside of you know just Spike Brothers from the Trial Deck. But you know as things goes on, then the nation will flourish. I would like to see a lot of better quality control than they had in B series.、Um, like a lot of the power in the cards they had、um, got out of hand really fast sometimes.、Um, even though in the first initial parts, like metas were stagnant for so long,、um, with OTT being the main precipice, and then they had a chance of things changing up with more sets coming out, obviously, which is you know what you'd hope with the main gr- progression of the game. But they had some really unhealthy metas too. With、um, with Melody, they had about A whole, nearly a full year of Reign of Supreme, which was absolutely insane. Just more love for the nation supports and how they work with Premium Two is something that I would like to see, especially since、um, the prospect of using、um, a lot of different cards into different clans is really cool as well. Because obviously before the only way you could do that is Cry Elementals, but now certain nations have access to the same cards, which I think could really be interesting in how some clans utilize them more than the others in the Premium State. Since The twenty-something clans will be converted to just five nations plus one. That will simplify the card design process, and hopefully, this will be an opportunity that Bruiser explores to design new creative game mechanics、um, with less power creep, and that will be healthier for the competitive scene. I want Vanguard to be accessible and interesting for newer players because, in the end. Without fresh blood, even the competitive scene will burn out. And seeing how they changed the rarity distribution and they promoted 300 in starter decks, I think Bushard made the correct first move. 
the big thing I really, really want to see is just interaction and combos straight out from the gate. I just want to see interactions and combos because I don't want to see what we saw in V where the first set was literally, oh, I'm going to turn card sideways and just attack. You know, I want combos, I want interaction, I want just everything just thrown in. We've already experienced what the game can do and, you know, that's all I want. I just want everything to just, you know, flourish straight away and more designs to come over that and then just combos and combos and combos and just make the game super, super fun straight up. What do you want to see from Overdress? A better method? Everything that I've seen so far was already on the bucket list of what I'd like to see on Overdress. So, like, I, I don't have much more that I want to see just solely because, like, we got, like, the ride deck, we got new... Um, new units, uh, it's back to lore, so that's all really dope, so it's great so far. What do you think of the right thing in, in premium? Mm. I don't know what, I like premium. I really, really dig it. I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure most of you guys know that I really love premium. Um, I liked premium a lot more than standard. And I just feel that, you know, people finally realize that premium is very, very so uh, into deck building, right? So I think with the introduction to Overdress and with, you know, multiple clans all joining into one nation, uh, all clans or now all nations have what uh, every support, every set, right? And like the first set, I think we're averaging about 24 new cards per nation plus the trial decks itself we're looking at about like 39 odd cards where you can start to deck build but you look at premium right there's nine years ten years worth of cards where you can deck build and i think that's um the thing that ties premium into what is now going to be the new standard and people finally realize that premium is essentially standard but just more cards and you know it's just an amazing thing to see that the community is you know growing um, beyond the standard and the you know the V premium side of things and treasuring into um, the amazing world of premium. So I really, really like that. Oh, I love it. Premium is my favorite format. I love how versatile like the card pool is, how you can play everything together. There's so many cool mechanics. Uh, you have the G zone, like the extra deck, uh, which was like one of my favorite parts about Yu-Gi-Oh was being able to have like a toolbox you can access. So. I mean, like, I'm, I'm glad more people are showing an interest in it and more people are trying to, you know, pick up the game. I think it's really exciting, especially the fact of uh, being a premium mainstay and a lot of uh, thought of WCC is in the sort of similar mind as well. Um, but it's, uh, it's just really cool to see that people are actually taking the initiative and interested in sort of picking up on premium, seeing how that's going. Because I remember at the start of the V series, a lot of people were very apprehensive of starting in premium and there was a lot of... Um, I've got to say a lot of toxic back and forth there, but this time around, this uh, this series as a whole is very, very exciting because there's a lot more, I feel like a lot more uh, unity on this front compared to what there was in the last reboot, um, because obviously with how um, V sort of turned out, people were very sort of drawn out, very bored, or just didn't like the state of the game, so with how this is looking is a very big refresher and especially in the premium mind so yeah it's just really exciting and uh, the one of the main worries people have is a sort of gateway entry into premium and honestly as a gateway premium is one of the most accessible sort of card games to get into as a whole when you're coming from say the V series and this is in comparison to other card games too you just need to get G guards, your strides, just a couple of each of these, some of the key ones and that's it and um, for a lot of these uh, clans like these two are really important for Aquaforce, for example, and they're dirt cheap, like, they're, they're, they're a couple of bucks each, if that, from what I remember, so, like, really, sort of like the baseline for just to, just to play with your friends, just to get into premium itself, is really super easy, yes, yeah, I think it's a really, really exciting time to get, trying to get into premium. I think it's a very good thing. Most WCC members would agree that premium is the eternal format that Vanguard needs to maintain, to be a successful TCG in the long run. And I very much agree with that. And hopefully uh, the increased interest will make Bushro give it a bit more love. We're entering the 10th year of Vanguard now, and not many card games survived that long. So it's really a great thing that has gone through 
all these years and all this legacy, card development, all these great, great events, they're all accumulated in that premium format. And you can't just throw that away. Hopeful. Hype. I, like, there's nothing else. It's just hype. Ready. As a whole, waiting for Overdress, I'm ready to see what the game will look like. One word that describes what you feel about Overdress. A very fresh rebirth. Fresh? Yeah, like fresh. It's great. I love all the new mechanics. Um, I love everything I've seen so far, and I hope the game goes in a very nice direction for everyone to enjoy. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Appreciate it, y'all. Feel free to comment, and yeah, hopefully Overdress suits all of you. Bye.